if we are accepting someone from outside at the cost of our basis, cultural basis, this is disaster. It's a simple way to, to make war, domestic war. As Poland votes to decide its future government, the country will also vote in referendums on illegal migration. To discuss the surge of migration into Europe and the future of Poland, I'm joined by the Polish Minister for Culture, Piotr Glinski. Why is peace calling a referendum on illegal migration? Because this is one of the main topics, uh, not only in Poland, but also in Europe. Uh, this is a real uh, problem for us uh, as Europe in a whole, but also we have some problem, especially because of the hybrid attack on our border from East, and this is purposely made by Putin and Lukashenko to use uh, those illegal migrants uh, for hybrid attack the, to destabilize Poland. And this, it's obvious for us that this is uh, the goal, uh, the, the, main, the main goal of this action. You know, there are uh, enable uh, to make trips those people from all over the world to Minsk, to Białoruś, and then they are transporting them to Polish border and pushing them uh, as illegal migrants. Because there are some uh, legal ways of entering border, uh, you know, if they uh, want to, to apply for asylum, it's possible, but they, they, they do not want. They want to go uh, further to 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 western uh, to to west uh, to the west and uh, first of all there are no maybe there are some uh, exemptions uh, but most of them are no war refugees they are illegal migrants and this is not the way of making uh, migration policy this is something which is uncivilized and it serves as an as an attack aggressive attack using very uh, aggressive methods uh, to destabilize the de destabilized uh, political situation in Poland Some and in Europe also, because this is the European issue, as, as you know. Everyone, uh, every country in uh, in Europe uh, feels this uh, this pressure. We'll, we'll get on to the European connection as well in a moment, but yeah. some cynics have said that piece called this referendum to merely increase voter turnout in the general election that's being held on the same day. What do you say to that accusation? It's a regular way of making a referendum. That it can be combined with election if there is an election. It's easier and cheaper. And also it's, it's, uh, it's also a matter of, of, uh, pub, of mobilization of, uh, of society, of, of public mobilization. I mean that it's normal. This is politics. We, we can't be, you know, uh, uh, hypocrites. That, uh, of course, this is the political issue because we have to say if you if we want to accept uh, this danger, or if we want to defend our country uh, and our community, especially that we, uh, as you know, uh, experienced. Uh, a lot of very sad and difficult moments because of uh, Putin war in Ukraine. We accepted millions of uh, war refugees from, from Ukraine. And we would like to uh, run our politics according to our rules. But first of all, our politics must be reasonable. We can't uh, solve all problems all over the world. It's impossible especially for Poland, which we are uh, developing still. You know, we are after years of very sad uh, economic situation during uh, communism and so on and so on. We are still under the, uh, the average level of, um, uh, of the development in Europe. We are going very fast. We are developing uh, uh, very, very fast now. Uh, one of the bigger increase in the economy in Poland, uh, which we observed during last years, uh, but we are still under the average level. So we have to 
first of all, uh, be focused on our, on our own problems. You mentioned Europe, the threat of migration to Europe. We've seen massive increases in illegal migration to places like Italy in recent months. Obviously in the UK we're facing a huge problem with many illegal migrants coming through the channel on small boats. Do you see illegal migration as a civilizational threat to Europe? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But this is, it, it, it is caused, first of all, as we remember, by this famous call of uh, Angela Merkel. She invited those people. This is the, the, the example of absolutely unreasonable and uh, unresponsible politics. And look at this symbolic uh, situation. From one side, Putin decided to use illegal migrants to make pressure on Europe. On the other side, Germany started the same from other position, other point of view, but the, the facts are similar. They invited those people because of some economic reasons, maybe there were some moral basis, but moral for what? For destabilizing Europe? making uh, troubles for everybody in Europe, crimes, ripes. It's absolutely a horrible thing. And, uh, and this politics is bankrupt now. So we have to defend Europe. We have to solve, solve the problems, of course. But the problem, of course, is much more deeper. It should be solved on the global level, but there is no effective tools to solve the problem on the spot yeah, in Africa, in Asia. So this is the main problem. In the UK, many people criticise our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak for his policy to send migrants to Rwanda in order to prevent the illegal migration. And they say that this policy is a racist policy. They say that these are asylum seekers, these are genuine refugees. What would you say to this argument that trying to stop illegal migration, trying to stop these genuine asylum seekers is racist? It's hard for me to make any uh, advices to your prime minister or to, to British people, because I don't know exactly. Uh, I've heard about it, this project. It was even mentioned as an example of solving problem. Probably it's, it, this is one of the possible solution. If uh, Rwanda, uh, the situation is stabilized, as I know, if the conditions are okay for accepting those people, probably it could be one of the solutions. Uh, but uh, from my uh, point of view, the five points appointed and, uh, by uh, our Prime Minister and by President now at the, at the meeting, in the international, international meeting in Granada or somewhere, sorry, I don't know <laughs> even, uh, is, is uh, very reasonable. We have to start with, uh, with, with watching our border. Our borders, European borders, must be affected. We have to uh, make, uh, you know, we have to solve the problem on the spot. We have to, to uh, sign agreements with governments sending the migrants to us, like Tunisia or some others. It can't be like this. We have some tools to even to, uh, to force them to, to be more reasonable because this is the very aggressive politics. We can't accept it. Sending migrants to Europe is very aggressive politics. Of course, they, they want to enter uh, our societies to, to get some social uh, benefits, uh, but this is something which uh, <clears throat> will not solve the issue, and it's rather caused a lot of troubles in the future. But there are some liberals who say that stopping illegal migration in this way is racist. What do you say to that? It is not racist. This is not racist. Uh, why is this racist? Those people are, uh, uh, they, they break law. Uh, so uh, the law is something which we can, which we have to, uh, uh, to respect. 
they say no human being is illegal. What does it mean illegal? They are uh, asked to go to the place that uh, they can live. There is no, it is not possible to accept everybody. You know, this is a, a blackmail, of course. This is the blackmail uh, which, which uh, is using as a uh, tool for destabilizing uh, our life. Uh, the states are organized, first of all, uh, for defense their members, yeah, societies inside states or, or building states. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the borders and the safety uh, issues are the, the, the main task to fulfill for states. So we have to uh, respect uh, this issue. Politicians are uh, obliged to uh, <clears throat> run uh, according ethics of responsibility, not ethics of emotions. We are responsible for something much more important for everybody than only uh, our personal feelings. It's sometimes difficult to understand for, uh, for uh, every, every average citizen, especially if he is uh, or she uh, lives in uh, comfortable conditions, eating, uh, sleeping, <laughs> taking rest, and so on. But uh, the reality is some, sometimes uh, much more serious and cruel, and we have to make decisions which are uh, responsible for everybody. Uh, it's also referred to the, to the so-called uh, multicultural politics. Yeah. Multicultural politics must be very careful, must be based on our knowledge uh, concerning the social life uh, rules. I'm a sociologist from my background, and I'm aware that, of course, we should support some kind of multicultural uh, politics because exchange of cultures, exchange of experience is okay, but not in a radical way, not in a revolutionary way. It must be evolution in, in this process of, uh, of mutual exchange of cultural ideas. So you want Poland to be a multicultural country? Uh, not in this understanding. I'm not, <laughs> I don't want Poland to be multicultural, but I understand that it is possible to, to live uh, and to exist in a society where there are different cultures, but not in the way which are observed now in Europe. For example, first, the, the first precondition, if you want to uh, join some cultures or to accept people from other cultures. The first precondition is the respect to the common denomination, come to the respect of common values. They have to, someone from outside, have to accept our values, our, uh, our basis for, 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 uh, for uh, existence of, of, of our community. The second is the distance between our values and these new values. So that's why it wasn't so difficult to accept millions of Ukrainians from different cultures, but not so far from us, yeah? similar to some extent. So these are main reasons. If you are dealing with the uh, huge distance between uh, cultures, you must be much, much more careful. You have used uh, different tools of uh, adapting people from different cultures. And first of all, you have to watch uh, how is going uh, this, this process of accepting your, uh, our main uh, national or cultural uh, values, as you call it. Because if we would like, uh, if, we, if we accepting someone from outside at the cost of our basis, cultural basis, this is disaster. It's a it's simple way to, to make war, domestic war, and this is stupid. And, and of course, politicians are very, sometimes are very stupid, or, or even being aware of this, that this is stupid, they are using this tool because they want to be liberal. They want to be 
you know, better than you because they are, uh, they, yeah, the, they express their high human value, values and, and so on. Yeah. But if this policy is a disaster, why has your government, Law and Justice Party, let in so many people from South Asian countries since 2015? There's been a significant rise in legal migration. In 2022, more than 50,000 Indians came to Poland, more than 5,000 Nigerians, around 5,000 Nigerians, 5,000 Bangladeshis. This, is, this data, you have, we have to deny this, this, uh, this data. These data probably are based on so-called work permits. But it doesn't mean uh, that our uh, different, different institutions, first of all business, but also uh, probably universities, uh, they wanted to, to accept some people from outside just to make business with them. Uh, um, uh, as a students or, or as a workers. Uh, but of course, uh, these are data concerning the, uh, as I said, uh, uh, work permits, but uh, all those people have been checked and the, the number of visa uh, issued for them were just, uh, were, were much more uh, smaller. But there's no doubt that legal migration from these countries has increased since 2015. But these are small numbers and this, uh, the, this migration is under control and and this is because there is no unemployment in Poland. So we need some people okay, to work and they are uh, hired uh, only uh, for uh, uh, their contract and not as a stable and constant uh, migrants. So this is different, absolutely different. This is not true. Yeah, our po opposition, they are using this argument that we accepted uh, thousands of migrants. Can you, can you see them some, uh, anywhere on the streets? Not at all. But there are some people from, from this country in Poland for, they have been for years. Uh, my uh, uh, example I'm using very, very often is uh, kebab uh, places. There's a lot of kebab because people uh, in Poland like uh, kebab. Yeah? So there's a lot of people working in this uh, industry. No problem at all. Thousands of them, no problems, no any riots. Uh, there was one, one case of this kind in Europe, in, in Poland for many years and uh, a producer made uh, um, uh, uh, a film on, the, on, on this topic. Yeah? Only once was some problem. We have thousands of them, they are accepted, they, there's no problems, there's no ghettos of migrants in Poland, not at all. There so it's under control, I can say. There was also an issue recently where it was uncovered that an embassy, a foreign embassy of Poland, was uh, giving these uh, visas um, to migrants from African countries in a kind this, of corruption this is scandal. Also, this is also not true. There were some uh, reports or even uh, photographs from Africa and as a matter of fact, there was no Polish consulate in this country. There was honor, honorable also, which, which can't uh, issue the, the visa. For. So it's uh, false. So where does this story come from? From opposition. It's, it's, these are political arguments against Polish government. This is not true. These are uh, fake news, fake news and false uh, data and, and so on. You know, there, there, is a, 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 there was a problem with, with uh, some uh, people. Uh, uh, com coming back to the, to the time where opposition was responsible for, for Minister of Foreign Affairs in Poland, they uh, liquidated uh, several or even more than 20 ambassadors. Uh, and they hired private business to help uh, the process of, of issues the visa. And this is the one of the reasons that there were some pressure, pressures on, on, on uh, getting visa quicker. Uh, and, but uh, it's under investigation now. The Polish uh, police uh, uh, realized that there is something wrong with it more than a year ago, 
it's under investigation and it's dealing with 268 visa. Only 268, so we are 40 million people in this country. So what does it mean 268 uh, people, even if they, were, they are here or they came here illegally? So, so there, is, there is something, some truth in it clearly because the, the police are investigating. Such a truth. And, Such a truth. <laughs> and it's possible that the, the 268 cases are the sort of tip of the iceberg. Perhaps there's a lot more They are to... under investigation. Yes. They, it's not, uh, this is not proved. So, but this is the scale of the problem. It, it was used as, uh, and, and uh, make uh, a political bullet against us. It happens in politics very often, especially if, if the other side have no other argument. So they are trying to find anything. Uh, and using it again uh, against us, but it's not true. Look at our streets at Poland. This is the most safety country in Europe. There is no any problem with riots uh, or based on um, multicultural problems. But this is what I want to ask about is diversity and multi multiculturalism because politicians in the West, they say that diversity and multiculturalism is a strength and you know, I live in London and I see lots of different communities around me and, I say, and p politicians say that this is a wonderful achievement, this is a great success. So is therefore Poland a weak nation because it lacks this diversity and multiculturalism? It could be accepted, but only on the basis of uh, common denomination with the, with, uh, which should be uh, the acceptance of, uh, of system of values uh, of uh, of uh, um, uh, and a nation, and this is the first thing. The second is distance, and the third one is the scale. You know, it must be really a minority, uh, and, it, 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 and we can deal with this. We are strongly against uh, European uh, policy on migration and especially this mechanism of uh, distribution of migrants in Europe. We accepted a lot of Ukraines. We, we are not responsible for uh, the past, <laughs> dealing with colonies also. So. And so this is absolutely unacceptable for us. And we are against this politics. But do you see diversity as a strength? No, I don't think so, that this is, uh, um, that you can say generally that this is the, the diversity is the strength. It depends on the situation, because we have the, the, an example of the uh, Polish uh, Commonwealth, the first Commonwealth of Poland, where there were three nations, yeah? but the cultures were similar, and uh, there was king who united uh, the Commonwealth, and it, it was good for any three nations. Yeah? Uh, in one commonwealth. And also British commonwealth works yeah, years ago. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, not your, your uh, wellness, your, uh, your affluent so, so society, it was built on, on this politics, you know. Well, uh, anyway. So uh, I can't say that we are for diversity as a, as a symbol or, or an idea. And this is something which is uh, empowering uh, country. It really depends on the situation and also how long these processes are going on. So first of all, uh, as I said, must be respect to the common uh, denominator, uh, I mean the ethos, values, and so on, must be uh, not far, uh, close distance, scale, and probably time. So the fourth one. Is Europe facing an invasion? You mean that... From migration? Uh, that we are facing the, uh, the invasion? In a way, in a way, this is danger for, for Europe. Yeah, that's right. So the Europe must be uh, much more responsible and to defend. First of all, we have to defend our borders. I don't know why it's so difficult to understand 
for any nation. So that's why we defend our border. We were forced to, to, to make this border wall. So it was, uh, you know, it's, it's not a pleasure for us, you know, but it, there was no uh, any other solution. So we have to defend. On the 15th of October, Poles will go to the election and they will decide on their future government and they will also decide on these referendums on illegal migration. Can you lay out the stakes for that election? What's at stake? The stake is multidimensional. For me, the most important thing is to save our sovereignty. Poland has no other solution. We have to be uh, independent country we ha because before our government came to power we were dependent on Germany. The Germany uh, German politics bankrupt. Uh, we were uh, between two, two very strong uh, pressures from outside. So we have, uh, we have to be uh, independent we, uh, this is about the, the sovereignty of our country. This is about uh, uh, of building our own resources for development. And we proved during uh, eight years that it's possible. We defending our economy, uh, we developed our economy. Uh, we are building the, the biggest uh, army uh, in, in Europe. Uh, we are building, uh, we already made uh, our energetic uh, sovereignty uh, uh, coming with, with, uh, with raw materials and we also build our uh, cultural sovereignty uh, building for example more than 300 uh, museums in Poland uh, institutions dealing with, uh, with our identity and history and so on so it's possible so this is about this and of course this is about also to deal with uh, dangers from outside. One of them is migrants. Of course, we have even more uh, bigger danger. I mean, Putin and, 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 and Russia, uh, aggressive imperial, uh, imperial uh, state. So this is the stake of this uh, of coming uh, election. If Poland uh, will save our sovereignty and possibility to develop uh, our own politics. Some in the opposition party, they say that inflation is very high. They say that, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, you've let in legal migration through the work permits. And they say that taxes are very high. Do you think that what, what taxes? What do you mean? They say that overall, the overall tax burden in Poland has increased under law and justice and uh, it's hurting working <laughs> this is families. Not true. The Confederacja is So, this, this is another fake, uh, fake news. Absolutely fake news. Uh, the, the miracle of our development uh, led uh, in, in this that we uh, decreased all taxes for business, for private people, uh, also. Uh, VAT, uh, and we uh, increased our economy at the same time. So this is the, uh, the dream of liberals, but it was made but by a Republican or conservative Republicans, not liberals. It's possible if state works, I mean defending our interest, our budget, we decrease the generation gap. gap uh, from 25, almost 25 percent, to uh, less than 5 percent, which is nothing. We also uh, diminish the rate of unemployment. We have probably, there is uh, practically, or, or, or there is no uh, unemployment in Poland, real unemployment. So this is the miracle uh, from economic point of view. Uh, made by reasonable, wise uh, politics. Yeah. And, and also it means that state works as a state. Yeah? You are the Minister for Culture and I want to talk about Poland as a conservative country. Now Hungary, one of your allies and uh, neighbours in Europe, they say that they are the strongest and most traditional conservative nation in Europe. Do you think that's accurate? 
you know, it's hard to say. I, I'm not a, a best specialist uh, on a Hungarian uh, nation. Of course, w we need nation which is based on uh, conservative or stabilized Christian values. Uh, I mean, in, in, in a broader sense of the word. Uh, Christians means people, not only people who are going to church, but those who respect these uh, values. Uh, the values which have been built in uh, Europe. Europe is coming from these values. Uh, and civilization is coming from these values. Uh, so we would like to, to have a, such kind of, of uh, community, respecting values uh, with uh, traditional institutions because those institutions work and serve people. I mean that they, they satisfy people's needs in the best way. Uh, and to avoid any dangers of contemporary uh, world and contemporary crisis of culture, because there is a, a global crisis of, of, of culture. All this new ideological currents uh, like uh, mm, council culture or, or first, uh, political correctness are very, very danger for everyday life. So, and they are also uh, in a way uh, unlogic, I can say, because there's a lot of discrepancies inside those ideologies, uh, and we are aware of it. There is a split, isn't there, in European Union countries between those Western liberal nations who believe in imposing their values on LGBT rights and things like that, and then in the East and Central Europe, there's Poland, there's Hungary, who are more traditional, who believe in the family, who believe in the church. Do you think that the EU is fundamentally flawed in this way because you have this tension between Germany and France and other Western countries in terms of their liberal values and then you have Poland and Hungary and other Central European countries and their conservative values? Uh, there is a split. I don't know how it's in the EU. I know that the EU you have some problems that the Conservative Party accepting uh, liberal values, but <coughs> it happens. Uh, in my opinion, the, the, the main problem is that those, uh, what you call, what you call uh, liberal values, are very aggressive and they are imposing their order. I mean, because it's connected with ideology and with uh, some kind of vision of, uh, of uh, social public order, they want to impose this order on uh, everybody. So this is why we are not accept them. Uh, they must be space for live for everybody, but uh, in uh, in a private sphere. But uh, they are entering public sphere, and they want to impose those uh, their values on everybody. So this is something which is the the split between us. I, I do not accept uh, such a thing because this is. For many reasons, this is not good for, for uh, society to live. Mm. As Poland is in the European Union and those countries try to impose their liberal values onto Poland, how do you see the future? How do you see the solution to that? Because this is a fundamental flaw, isn't it, within yeah. the European Union for Poland? This is, this is the, the stock is the future of Europe, the model, the, 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 the future. Uh, model of Europe. It's, it's also connected with this uh, idea uh, ever closer union. Yeah? Uh, so we are for the, the unit of independent nations. They are for federalization yeah? and for making uh, a kind of European society, which is artificial, which is stupid, which uh, will not work. How do you overcome that? using tools which are uh, possible to use. I, I mean that we will talk with them. First of all, we have to uh, win election. Uh, and if we win election, we will have a mandate to 
represent Poland, and we will try to uh, to run this dialogue or discussion. Uh, there is a lot of arguments uh, concerning, for example, the bankrupt uh, of of this politics, which is visible in any way. Uh, the the international politics, the the Mm, uh, the German-Russian uh, relationships already bankrupt, but we also see the, the immigration politics also bankrupt. So they must draw conclusions with, with their activity. <laughs> and that's why we still think that we will have to, to build this coalition of conservative uh, parties and, and thinking. We are not radical, I think. We are very, uh, you know, reasonable. <laughs> and, and in some, we, we believe also not only in natural law, but also in, in, common, uh, in common sense. So um, this is, uh, I think, our weapon. Let's talk about Ukraine because there have been some tensions between Poland and Ukraine recently over the issue of grain imports and Poland has said we're not going to allow um, Ukrainian grain to be sold in Poland but of course we'll allow it to transit to other countries and Zelensky and other Ukrainian politicians have become very angry at this and there has, as I said there's been some tensions recently. How do you see the result of that? What's, the, what's going to happen to the future of Ukrainian-Polish relations? From our point of view, this is uh, very sad or we are disappointed because of this Ukrainian statesman and, and, and politics. And we observed uh, the German role in this. And Germany exert pressure on Ukraine and uh, they are, you know, from the beginning uh, they were waiting for Putin. And they were waiting for the solution, and uh, they were absolutely confirmed that the, the, the Ukraine have no chances. Now they change their approach to Ukraine, and they are building a new relations with Ukraine. They want to. Uh, to realize the German interest in, in the Ukrainian economy. And this is probably the main reason of this uh, change of uh, Ukrainian approach to Poland. We are disappointed, but we have to defend our interest. Our interest is to put Putin as far as possible from our border. So we, we are supporting Ukraine, as you know, but we can't accept uh, any uh, un-Polish or, or uh, economic policy of Ukraine. We can't, uh, you, you know, the, the, for this war, responsible is of course, uh, Putin is responsible for this war, first of all, but also uh, this uh, German. German Russian policy. It should be solved at the cost of Germany, not on, at the cost of Poland. I mean, these economic problems. So that's why we are, we have no solution. We have to defend our market, and uh, Ukraine should be aware of it. So this is, yeah. Prob and, and the other problem with Ukraine is that they are not still ready to. Uh, to let us uh, to make searching and exhumation of our victims from Volyn massacre, but not only from Volyn genocide. So these are still problems which are not solved, and this is uh, on the side of Ukraine to solve. Do you think that Germany should have a seat on the UN Security Council? This is something that Ukraine has been pushing for. Germany? not for many generations. First of all, Germany have to pay uh, reparation to Poland uh, for they made here. They killed almost six million Poles, uh, Polish citizens, and they have stolen and destroyed half a country. Purposely, purposely, to make Pol Poland uh, 
not existing, not the existing uh, country, state, or society anymore. So that's why there is no place in the civilizing world for Germany. Thank you very much, Minister Glinski. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome.